Hey, welcome to Hiking with Kevin. I'm Kevin, thanks for joining me. It's a little nippy out today. I had to break out my flannel shirt. I love flannel shirts. I wear them whenever I get the opportunity. Everybody loves flannel. Flannel is like the distant cousin of plaid, but everybody loves flannel. People make fun of plaid though, you know? You can't get away always with wearing plaid. But flannel, yeah. I got a lot of flannel shirts. I have flannel pajamas, which I, I would stay in all day if I could. Thanks for joining my hike. We're gonna have a lot of fun today. So take your protein pills, put your helmet on, slip into your flannel pajamas, and let's go on it. I'm telling you, this flannel shirt's coming in handy today. It is chilly. When I was on Saturday Night Live, I lived in New York City, I had a closet full of flannel shirts. I wear them all the time. Sometimes I double up on them, triple up on them. In fact, that's where I met my hiking guest in New York City. We were both on Saturday Night Live together. He was a great writer. He co-wrote Mr. Subliminal with me. He's written a lot of great political sketches. He's one half of the comedy team of Franklin and Davis. He's got books he's written, including Rush Limbaugh is a Big Fat Idiot. He's the former senator from Minnesota. That's right. Today we're hiking with Mr. Al Franken. Yeah, we are here at Will Whoa. Rogers State Park. Will Rogers, this is where Tom Davis and I used to go. Tom Davis, your, your ex-partner, writing partner, well, comedy partner. Right, and we came here in 1973 after... Pre-Saturday Night Live. Pre-Saturday Night Live, graduated uh, from college. We drove out here with Franny and uh, did the comedy store. And so, how did Saturday Night Live come about for you? For me, for me and Tom. You and Tom. Uh, we had an agent who had came to the comedy store every once in a while, and he sees us, a William Morris agent. Yeah. And he brings us in. He said, "You guys are really good writers. Would you ever? Would you like to write for a comedy show?" And uh, we said, "Sure. We'd like to work." Yeah. So he said. Well, why don't you write a package for a show that you'd like to see on TV, right. that you'd like to be on. So, uh, we wrote a package that included a newscast, a commercial parody, a sketch. You wrote this? Yeah. This, this was, was before SNL was developed, even? Yes. A sketch and a conceptual film. Okay, so you just happened to come up with the same kind of a format as SNL that Lauren had in his head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got hired when he was putting the show together. So I think we were each making $300 a week when we first got there, but we got a raise pretty fast. I'm sorry, I, I, I love, hi. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Good, you? Hey, how you doing? Norman. Yeah. I, I love the show, I was just, like, I go crazy when for a month there's the no- The hiking show? Yes. Oh, thank you. When for a month there's no episode, I, like the, the inside joke <laughs> of my girlfriend is like, Kevin died. Oh my God, Kevin died. <laughs> it's okay. possible. I mean, I love hiking. I'm here in the winter to hike, and, and so th this is awesome. And I, I really, really enjoy it. Thank it you. It makes me happy every episode. I watched the episode last night when it came out. So oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, very nice to meet you. Great. Yeah. Nice meeting Cheers. you too. What's your name? Norman Marcos. Oh, nice to I'm meet you. I'm from Toronto. Norman. I'm just kind of I'm a snowboarder oh, cool. basically, so I hike here and. And I've hiked on the Rhine as well, and I saw one time you introduced. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of point-to-point -point hiking in Europe. Oh, nice. Uh, where, you know, somebody, a taxi will take your bags, and we do, like, you know, one-week trips where we go point-to-point -point and eat. So you're from food. Canada? Yeah, yeah. Now, does this trail lead to Canada? Yes, yes. Well, are there more Canadians coming down? Uh, uh, a number of them okay. are coming down. Because <laughs> we're looking for the poutine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. It's Canadians, man. They're not nice. No. That's one thing you can say. You sure. always hear about that. Jeez, well, look at nice. Lauren. <laughs> Lauren is Canadian. Lauren, Lauren yeah. Michael. Paul Schaefer. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. All right, where were we? You're, you're, you're hired as writers, and they haven't casted it yet, right? They, they uh, Actually, Gilda had been cast and Danny had been cast. Cast came together. I remember Belushi did Samurai, and in his audition. He did. So cut to about 11 years later. I come on the show, yep. and of course I recognize you and Tom, and I'm like, you know, so kind of excited and also intimidated. At the and we recognize you as an attitude player. 
for example, in Chippendales. Hmm. Okay. Which Chris Farley. It's my Chris, one of my favorite sketches, by the way, Chris's. Yeah, it was a brilliant, brilliant sketch, and it was 90% downy. And uh, but you play uh, the guy has to tell Patrick Swayze and Chris, who are two finalists, and you have to choose between one. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Farley made it to the finalist, well, nobody I, questions that. Yes, and his dance was friggin' hysterical, yeah. and Swayze was a dancer. And, and not one of us broke. No. No. Not at all. No, you. A guy, a guy is the attitude guy. Doesn't break. <laughs> no, you don't break. No, you don't break. No. And uh, so uh, your attitude was trying to explain why you chose Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of Farley exactly. doing. Yeah. And then finally going like, then he does tries to do a sexy move, and you go, no, 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 no Barney, please, please, don't Barney, 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 no, Barney, uh, don't we've. Decided. That's sad. <laughs> <Just> sad. <laughs> and so, if you go back and, and watch that sketch, watch Kevin. What do you remember about Chris Farley? I remember when he got off the elevator the first time, how wide eyed he was and excited. Oh, and God. I, I mean, he's with his brother and his mother, maybe. Uh, the sweetest guy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know. He had some issues addiction and troubles. Yeah, addiction. addiction problems, yeah. yeah. Uh, huge, but at least we knew it, you know. And I said, I said to him, you know, you can lose like 40 pounds and still be the Belushi guy, you know. And he, and, and he would laugh at that. He so wanted to be Belushi. I told him once. I said, you know, you, yeah, you know, you got to like try to clean, clean, clean up your act a little bit. He goes, oh, Belushi did drugs and drank. I said, but yeah, but think how much funnier he would have been if he didn't do drugs. You know, it's not like we didn't know after Belushi that you die from this. Yeah. Stuff and and Chris knew and he went to he tried really hard. He, yeah, he did. He went to like I don't know uh, between half a dozen and a dozen rehabs. You know, but here's a guy. I mean, he was a guy who was a fan of everybody else. Yeah, you know, he was a guy that no one. Every, everybody loved Farley. Uh, he was so graceful, so graceful, and such. Yeah, a, he was a really great athlete. Yep, and he. His we play basketball together a lot. Yeah, his dance in it is a great dance, which is what almost sells the idea that he could have been a finalist. <laughs> you know what we I got... like to do in hikes? What? Sit down <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> uh, we're sitting here at Inspiration Point. Uh, have you gotten any inspiration from it? Well, as I said, Tom, Tom and I, when we moved out here, this is where we go for recreation. Yeah. And we throw the frisbee down at the polo field. There's a polo field. That's right. I, when you asked me where to hike, this was a perfect place. There's a lot of um, nostalgia here for you. Yes. And sense. Tom, of course, is gone. Tom Davis. Well, yeah, Tom Davis. That was so sad. You know, you talk about the party they threw for Tom when he had uh, a terminal yeah. illness. Yeah. And it was nice. You get everybody there. People kind of paid their respects to him, and they told him how much they appreciated him and loved him. Yep. And you got to hear that. And uh, he only had like a couple months to live, right? At that point, you know, he had already, he, he was already at the point where he was apologizing to people for still being alive because a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people had said goodbye to him and he had give, been given a year and he, he lasted three years. And it was very moving. Wow, three uh, years. He must have been embarrassed. He was, uh, you know, when he last, uh, I saw him, uh, it was right before he died. He just said to me, uh, you know, I said, I've learned so much from you about the way you've done this. And he says, I hope yours is faster. <laughs> Who's the most out of shape uh, person you did? This the most with? out of shape uh, hiking guest, I think? Yeah, hiking guest. Well, first of all, I'm the most out of shape. I'm yeah. the one that's usually huffing and puffing. But aside from me, you, I'd say you are <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm forever indebted to you because when I was doing Weekend Update, nobody wanted to write for Weekend Update because it wasn't a glorified position. You love politics, you love writing about it and watching C-SPAN two, three, four, however many C-SPANs there were. I think there was only one at that time and they only had one mic. Yeah. <laughs> so you came one up and camera. actually wrote jokes read the paper, Tom Davis would come up and kind of disappear into his office. Norm McDonald would come up just to read the paper and have a nice hot breakfast. Oh, but anyway, thank you for, for Well, that. you know, I always thought that anyway, the topical jokes, uh, good jokes and update were, you know, were, were gold. And that's 
But you're the anchor, and uh, now I wanted to succeed you. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't get it. So yeah. that's why I left the show. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and I'd, I'd always want to do update, but it, Lauren made the right choice. Or, or Lauren, I think Olmeyer too, because I had pretty much worn my politics on my sleeve. I was a, a, a liberal, I was a progressive, I was a Democrat. Yeah. And you don't want somebody who's declared that. Uh, right. But I had done like 15 seasons on the show, and I thought it was my. You know, and Lauren had known yeah. for a long time that I wanted to do it, and I, I didn't get it, and that's when I left the show, and that's when I, after that, I wrote Rush Limbaugh's a Big Fat Idiot and other <laughs> observations, right. and that's it right. started, got, it got me on the path that eventually led to, uh, you know, the radio show that I did, and then, yeah. and then uh, running for the Senate and winning and going mm. to the Senate, and I can't remember how that ended. <laughs> When you ran for senator, yes, um, how difficult was it to refrain from being funny? Because your whole life is about being funny and trying to get the laugh. And when you become a senator or you're running for senator, all of a sudden it's like serious stuff now. Yeah, and not only that, but you know, I learned. I, I wrote a book uh, called, Al, ironically now, Al Franken, Giant of the Senate. And in it, I talk a lot about about you know that struggle and you know a lot of times we in comedy do jokes with each around each other around the rewrite table and stuff like that that are uh aren't intended to they're, be in the show the risk we yeah, yeah well or they're dark yeah right some joke i had done at a three o'clock rewrite that was about it, it doesn't matter what it was about but it was impossible to explain to Minnesotans exactly and I was trying to explain what it's like at a three o'clock rewrite three in the morning and and Conan said to me yeah if if I was on trial and the prosecutor asked me have you ever in a three three a.m. rewrite done a joke about defiling Lincoln's body immediately after he was assassinated, I'd have to throw myself on the mercy of the court. Yeah. And when you first went to Washington, did a lot of your colleagues ask you questions about SNL and, oh, yeah. and all that? Yeah, yeah. Fans and... yeah, I remember Marco Rubio, when he first came in, he went, what happened to Michael, uh, uh, Anthony, Hall? Michael Anthony Hall year? <laughs> I went, well, Lauren went young, you know, but it was... It was funny. That was his first question, and yeah, you know, and no, I, I would get asked a lot of questions. How crazy was it living in Washington D.C.? I mean, these are the people you made fun of all your life, you know, or at least in your comedy years. I think you know? people in D.C. and and Downey and I wrote a lot of the the the, the comedy, yeah, uh, the, the political satire, right? And I don't think we made vicious fun of people, and we were Downey's a conservative, and. I'm a liberal, and we kept each other honest, and we didn't yeah. try to make it. We tried to do informed, you know, stuff that would reward people who knew stuff, but wouldn't punish people who didn't. Right. Right. So I don't think, by and large, we did anything that vicious. And I think people who we did were flattered. That that's funny, isn't it? How people are flattered when you make fun of them sometimes. But Dana did um, these impressions that. Were caricatures of impressions almost, you know. He would exaggerate them so much it became mostly kind of tonal noises like not god da, not, not god da, da. <laughs> and Bush loved them. Yeah, and, and, but he House. would do, yeah. you know, he would do that stuff. But uh, Bush invited him to the White House right after he lost, and yeah. they became friends. And Dana could get laughs at will, and Bush loved them. And Bush loved them. Uh, there's a polo field here where they used to. Or maybe they still do. I mean, you don't have a polo field, not use it as a polo field. They well, have horses the, here. You know, the odd thing, uh, Al, is that they turn this uh, polo field into a water polo field. <laughs> There's no water, but the uh, players show up in their bathing suits and goggles. What's your favorite part of the country? Uh, my favorite part of the country is on the border of the country, and it's the boundary waters between Minnesota and... Uh, 
Canada, which is a wilderness area. And that's where we need a wall. That's where we need a wall. Right <laughs> well, there. to keep the poutine out. How yeah. do you like being a grandfather? Oh, that's great. There's nothing... I, for, I have one activity I love the most, and that's putting uh, my grandson to bed, my five-and-a-half-year-old. I have to say, you seem more introspective lately. Really laid back, putting a lot of thought into things, and kind of more observational, I think, than you used to be. Well, you know, it was very strange to obviously go from uh, the job in the Senate, which I loved, loved, and... Uh, loved yeah, you were great. And, uh, you know, where you're uh, doing... It, it, it's actually a great job for someone who has a short attention span sometimes because <laughs> you have like 10 meetings a day, if, yeah. that, if that small, and going from one thing to another, and you're staffed and briefed and all that stuff. And that's, uh, that's one kind of life. And It was a very busy life. Yeah. 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 So, and I miss it. I, yeah, I do. I because you get to do things that are consequential. Right. Right. And you were good at it. Thank you. You did a lot for Minnesota and for the country. And the world. And the world. And in the a world. world. You did the best commercial parodies. I'm telling you, some of my favorites, the Love, the love Toilet. The Love Toilet, that was me and Odin Kirk. Really? Yeah. And that, that was, was so you funny. and Victoria me Jackson. And, Victoria. and it was two toilets kind of side by side. Yeah. So we, Colin Blow. Colin yours? Blow was and and down. And and Downing. I'm sorry, and uh Ackroyd. Really? Ackroyd had the name. Dan Ackroyd got Colin it. Blow. Yeah. Which in itself is the concept. Yeah. Which it had like ten thousand times the fiber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, Royal Deluxe two. That's yeah. where the, the ride's so smooth you can super uh, circumcise, you circumcise the, babe. the back. Yeah, that was a, that was a classic. Yeah. Uh, Did you do the uh, the Yugo car, the clay car? No, See? that was George Meyer. It was made out of clay. It was the uh, no, no. That was the uh, Adobe. The Adobe. That's right. It was the Adobe, and the last line was. You can buy a cheaper car, but we wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I now like to do negative, uh, the negative voiceovers for po political campaigns. Kevin Nealon says he's yeah. against crime. Yeah. But did you know that in 2003, Kevin Nealon was involved in a series of gangland slaves. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Al Franken. I love reminiscing about our days on Saturday Night Live, man. So many fun stories about Chris Farley and Dana and Lauren and me. Especially me, I know. <laughs> Thanks for joining my hike. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you next time. Happy trails. Ha, 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 ha.